Yes, Visual Studio 2022 finally out along with .NET 6, which is on by default. Here is the launch blog post ARM, A-R-M, zero out of zero hits on this page. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. Okay, hmm, maybe you should just try it. I'm actually, before we start, a few of you have asked me this. What's the difference between Visual Studio 2022, Visual Studio for Mac, and Visual Studio Code? Now, I've covered the difference between Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code before. Visual Studio is the full IDE, so now version 2022 is out. Visual Studio for Mac 2022 is not out yet or it's still in preview so we're gonna see which one of these will actually work which one of these will support arm this is a machine i have here which is the macbook pro with the m1 max chip in it 64 gigs of ram that's important for this because we're running a virtual machine here windows 11 via parallels runs pretty well so this windows 11 is made for arm it works very well but is it going to run visual studio okay you have different levels here the community edition is the free one then you have professional and enterprise the difference between these is professional enterprise is paid and you get a lot more features in those products whereas community edition is pared down it still has a lot more features than visual studio code by default inside the integrated ide integrated development environment so it all comes with it you also have extensions visual studio code is more like a very light editor where you can also get extensions and also visual studio has a really nice debugging environment experience. okay so let's grab this one so far so good the installer runs let's click yes does it run look at that it's downloading it's verifying and it's installing hey okay that's just the installer the installer is installing I wonder what the task manager looks like when you're looking at this does it differentiate between arm processes and uh, x86 processes okay here we go uh, task manager doesn't really have much detail here you could probably add more detail edge is most likely the arm version of edge at least I would hope it would be here we go details I need to know the process name in order to see okay wow so that's uh, not easy to map <laughs> well, we can see that Edge is on ARM process right there. And setup for Visual Studio is x64. Okay, so we get this setup screen. I mean, this looks fine and it's working. So let's uh, let's set it up for web development. There's all these other options here. I'm just going to do web development. Now, it says .NET Framework 4.8. .NET Framework 4.8 is not going to work on ARM. So I'm going to just uncheck that to save some space. Let's install. So this might take a little bit. While it's installing, let's go have a look at Visual Studio for Mac. Hmm. So there is Visual Studio 2019 for Mac, and that's not to be confused with Visual Studio 2022 for Mac, <laughs> which is this one. So 2022 is the one that's in preview. 2019 is the one that's released, at least I think. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's search this one for ARM. What? There's not a mention of ARM on this page? Okay, let's take a look at the release notes. ARM. Aha! Visual Studio 2022 for Mac version 17. So by the way, if you missed that video where I was testing Visual Studio 2019 for Mac, that was not uh, supporting Apple Silicon yet. Uh, you can check that video out. But this one, it looks like it's supposed to. So let's, let's just take a look here. Summary of what's new for Mac. .NET 6. And that one, by the way, works on Apple Silicon. And command line .NET. The command line utility .NET will also work. We're just looking at the IDE now. So does uh, the IDE support? Oh, oh, bummer. Okay, so it says on Apple Silicon M1 or ARM64 machines, the .NET 5.0, 6.0, and .NET Core 3.1, x64 SDKs. Whew, that was a mouthful. Released in November are not supported by Visual Studio for Mac 17 Preview 3. Preview 3. Okay, so folks, Visual Studio 2022 is Visual Studio 17. 17 is the version number. 2022 is the official name. So it's unfortunate. It looks like it does not actually support it, but will it run and does it look okay? Let's check. Ah, back in Windows, look what we got here. We got this message. Installing Visual Studio on an ARM powered device is not supported. If you continue, Visual Studio might be slow or unusable. For best experience with ARM based devices, we recommend remote targeting. So <laughs> remote targeting is where you have your Apple Silicon Mac, but don't use Visual Studio on that. Oh no, you want to use Visual Studio? You have to get a Windows machine and use Visual Studio on that. And then you can connect remotely to Apple Silicon in order to build your project for Apple Silicon. 
it's it's sad. So I'm gonna go ahead and say continue here. We're gonna forge on and see how bad the experience will be or how unusable it'll be. Let's just see. In the meantime, I found this uh, article here. It says Microsoft previews. This is from the register, by the way. Microsoft previews VS 2022 for Mac, but why bother when VS Code runs just fine on Apple hardware? Clearly, this is uh, a headline either written for attention or um, somebody doesn't know the difference between Visual Studio 2022 and VS Code. However, do they actually have a point here? Because Visual Studio for Mac is like, um, how should I say? It's getting there, but it's taking its time. It's nowhere close to the capabilities of VS Code even, I would say. Yes, you can run Xamarin and do um, iOS and Android projects using Xamarin. You can even do .NET Core projects on that as well. But you can do all that with VS Code as well. And VS Code gives you a much lighter, cleaner, faster experience from what I've seen based on my experience with Visual Studio for Mac. So it's kind of debatable. Visual Studio itself for Windows is a really great product and VS Code is nowhere near that if you want a full-fledged IDE. But Visual Studio for Mac has a long way to go. However, it does provide something. It provides an out-of-the-box, easy setup experience. You just install it, it runs. For those people that don't want to mess around with command line stuff, installing your SDK for .NET separately, um, getting VS Code and then having to install install extensions to do support for C Sharp, for example. Some people find that a pain and they want to just have a one click shop, which is what Visual Studio for Mac provides. Anyway, so here's a post for you to read if you want to check it out. I'm just uh, interested in seeing some of the comments here, what people are actually saying about this. This post came out just uh, yesterday. Here's one. I use Vim a lot. It's a very powerful if you know how to use it. I don't like using a circular saw or a jigsaw for jobs, but they're tools and to get jobs done, I do use them. Basically, the point is there are different tools and you might not like it, but that's what's out there. The primary purpose of an IDE is source level debugging, ideally with in-place code editing and continuation. Although you can work with a separate debugger and editor pair, it isn't as powerful due to the lack of in-place editing. So that continuation and that in-place editing is what Visual Studio IDE allows you to do. Same commenter, a good IDE is a very good editor in its own right, even if there are things like um, ED, EX, VI, VM can do that an editor can't, that an IDE editor can't. And there are also things that IDE editors can do that Vim and Emacs struggle with, like chasing down references to a method or member every which way in NetBeans. What about you folks? What do you uh, use? Do you use VS Code? Or do you use Visual Studio? Let me know in the comments down below. I have a feeling that there is um, a lot more demand for VS Code out there than for Visual Studio because VS Code is an editor. So it naturally can handle anything you want to edit. You want to write an essay in it? Go ahead. So let me know what you're using down in the comments. What MS has most succeeded at doing is confusing me. I can't keep straight which is which, even just reading your comment. Both sound only half finished and I'm probably going to just avoid both of them. Well, that's like saying, I need to cut this piece of wood to use the other person's analogy. And uh, you know what? I don't know how to use a saw and I don't know how to use a circular saw or a table saw or a jigsaw. So I'm just going to try to bite it with my teeth. Now, here's a person that actually uses VS for Mac. It has problems, but is a proper version of Visual Studio. It is worlds apart from VS Code. Asking the question seems to imply a lack of experience to me. For .NET 5, C Sharp Dev, VS Mac is very solid except for quirks and bugs, which make it annoying. Docking Windows is virtually impossible and differences to Windows versions. If 22 can bring the two to be consistent, I would be a huge fan. Different tools for different people and different types of work. Never the twain. Okay, so this this might... Uh, <laughs> this might push some buttons here. Full Visual Studio. Developers with some serious project work that needs to be done with all the necessary tools. Serious project. And VS Code is an IDE for the rest of we part-time coders and scripters. Small, versatile enough for the task, but can compete with the features a full dev would need on a serious project. A full dev. Not half a dev. A full dev. So this, <laughs> I've seen this kind of comment before, and these are the kind of people that don't like to try new things. VS Code is a very powerful tool, and it should not be discounted that easily. Anyway, let's see how we're doing over here. Okay, it's done. It's done installing. I'm going to say sign in later. We're just checking it out today. Look at that. The default is dark theme. Okay, I'll accept the default now. We're preparing for first use and it may take a few minutes. If you've installed Visual Studio before, you know it takes a while, but this did not take long. Look at that. 
a few minutes later and I'm able to already create a new project. So let's go ahead and create a new project. And okay, the spinny circles are pulling in some data, it's taking a while. Here we go. Console application. Should we start with that? Okay, next, there's a console app. Uh, next, ah, .NET 6 long term support. That's our only option right now because that's the only one we installed. So that comes by default with VS 2022. Let's create this thing. Okay, it's taking longer than I would expect creating the project. So it's it's chugging away. Let's take a look at what's going on here. We've got a lot of x86 and x64 processes. These look like all Visual Studio related things here. Yeah, dev and vis that's uh, actual Visual Studio. It's called devenv.exe. That's running at x64. So what's happening here, folks, is we're on ARM. That's Apple Silicon. Then Parallels is actually on ARM. Windows is ARM. But Windows has the capability of taking an x64 running process and translating it down to ARM to be able to run it on ARM. So that's what's happening here. It's like Rosetta, but the opposite. So here we have a console application. Let's click play here and let's see what happens. It's building. It's pretty slow, but it, it works. By the way, if you're interested in me comparing the speed of this to um, Visual Studio on an Intel machine. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd be curious to see that myself. That's a console application. Let's see what else we can do. I'm going to add a new project. Let's go with the ASP.NET Core web app. Next, next. Okay, .NET 6, configure for HTTPS, enable Docker. I'll leave that as defaults. It created the app. It's actually on. Uh, let's, sorry, that's not it. That's the console app. So it's a bit of a sluggish experience. Just I can't hop around it quickly. I'm going to need to set this web application to be the startup project so that when I press play, it's going to start that one. Up. Let's see. The build started. Oh, we get an error. The following error occurred. Running the dev search tool must trust the ASP.NET Core development certificate and the system cannot find the file specified. Well, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Um, it looks like it's a search issue. So maybe the search tool is actually an x64 process and it can't find the ARM one. What I could do is probably create a web app without HTTPS. Let's try that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit of a slow experience using this. Okay, okay, I know you can't start. Let's go to solution, right click, add new project. I use this on Windows machines. I mean, I am on Windows, but I use this on non virtualized Windows. And I also use this on uh, Windows in parallels, but on an Intel machine, and it's much, much faster. By the way, link to parallels down in the description below. If you're interested in picking up a copy works very well if you want to use Visual Studio, but you're on an Intel machine. So there you go. Go with a core web app, web application two this time, but I'm gonna uncheck configure HTTPS, right click, set a startup project, let's go. Come on, come on, no errors. Okay, it's running. Hey, it opens up Edge and there's our app. It's actually running. <laughs> I can navigate, there we go. Can I debug? Go to index, put a breakpoint. Can it let me debug or not? Looks like debugging work. I mean, it's really slow. I've mentioned that. <laughs> you get the idea. So you wouldn't be able to do all the things you wanna do and as quickly as you wanna do, you can sort of use it, but it's not gonna be a quick experience and maybe not as pleasant. I'm gonna suspend this machine. And by the way, for Windows, um, I did give it six processors and six 16 gigs of RAM. So Windows runs very well, I'd say. Not all the software is going to work on it, but it runs well. Visual Studio for Mac. Wait a minute, where's the... I don't see Visual Studio 2022 for Mac. Oh, so hard to find anything. They have so much information on the Microsoft site, but uh, so hard to find anything. Okay, I think this is it. Visual Studio Community 2022 Preview. Okay, that is it. It's a DMG that we can install. So now I'm installing this on my Mac. Now here's some options that you get. You can install .NET. We need that. Legacy. These are listed as legacy. Well, Android is listed as legacy. No, I'm not going to install Android or iOS. I just want to see .NET here and .NET Core. So install that one. One of the commenters, Martin Merkin, uh, has been also blogging about uh, .NET 6. He's been testing it out. He also has been using the M1 for the past year or so. And he's got 16 gigs of RAM on there. And uh, he is not planning on upgrading until he runs into some walls. But so far, he's been doing .NET development on it successfully. So it is possible to do it. Uh, I don't think he's using Visual Studio, but he's using the command line tool, what I understand. So for those of you that are interested, it is possible to use the cross platform .NET tools and .NET 6. And apparently, according to Martin, at least .NET 6 is going to give you a slight performance boost in some areas uh, like the test I ran on this channel. This was a crypto test. You can just search for that. Now, I might have some more videos on .NET and doing some speed comparisons. If you are interested in that, let me know. This is just just a look at the new IDE 
2022. We have some bouncing. Is it opening? What's going on here? Hey, look at that. It's opening on the other screen. Uh, let's sign in later. Uh, this one. Look at this interface versus the other interface. This is a lot simpler, a lot cleaner, but also has a lot less features. So let's uh, let's create a new project here. And I also want to take a look at Activity Monitor to see what's going on here. This one pretty clearly shows what's Intel and what's not. So here is Visual Studio Preview, and it's running as an Intel process. ASP.NET Core Application. Continue. .NET 6 is the only option. And I'm going to keep Configure for HTTPS on. Let's see if it works on the Mac. Doesn't pre-fill this information. Okay. Creating the project, I guess, disappeared. Oh, there it is. So I don't know which one is faster, this one or the one that's running on Windows virtualized. So as you can see, there is quite a difference in the experience here. It looks like an IDE or some editor, but uh, it looks to resemble more like Xcode. And I think they were going for a native Mac feel here. So that's probably what's going on here. Pages, index, let's open up that one. And let's, uh, let's put a breakpoint right there and let's start this up. Building the app. Okay. Come on. Okay. Invalid development certificate found. So a very similar error to what we saw on Windows. But here it's giving you an option to run a tool that's going to access uh, the keychain and install the certificate tool so we can run HTTPS. Hopefully that'll work. Install and trust. Okay. Touch ID or enter your password to allow this. Touch ID doesn't work. <laughs> hey, I think that worked. It installed the cert and it's starting up the site. Look at that. Hello. Did I miss something? Oh, it's in the Alex. Silly. I put a breakpoint there. But that's proof that the breakpoint works. Great. Let's see how quickly it uh, navigates. Yeah. So it's it's working pretty well once it gets going. Probably the second time you run it, it'll uh, work even better. I wonder if it'll reuse that session. No, nope, it opens up a new tab. Okay. So the second time we ran it much, much faster. So there you go. That's what it looks looks like, uh, but it's still an Intel process. So it's going to be translated by Rosetta. And I don't know when the Visual Studio 2022 for Mac, maybe they'll call it 2023. I don't know. Hopefully not that long. I don't know when it's going to support Apple Silicon officially. I've seen rumors or uh, reports maybe that they're going to be doing it in 2022. We'll see. But so far, it's been pretty hush hush about ARM support and not much information out there. And maybe this is done on purpose. What are your thoughts about that? As always, it's been fun. Appreciate a like for this video if you did find it useful or entertaining and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.